And you are officially tuned in to KPSU, Portland's college radio station, which is streaming worldwide 24-7 at www.kpsu.org, where all of our fabulous shows and podcasts are available for download at any time. You can also check out tonight's in studio on PSU TV. The official link is psu.tv slash live. That way you can check out Tom Lyons here in the studio, who I'm about to introduce right now. Hello, Tom. Hello, hello. Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to the studio. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Oh, yeah, it's nice to be in a place with air conditioning. This is way better than my apartment right now, so oh, this is good. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I sweated like probably a gallon on the way over on my bike. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me a little bit about how you came to Portland. Uh, the short version is I met a girl, which is, the, that's the very short version. Uh, I met a lady who had moved to, to England for a little while. She was studying and uh, a friend of mine was in the same class. And uh, we, we met one night at a really, really awful bar for somebody's birthday party, a terrible bar. And we bonded over how terrible it was, and then that was the beginning of that. And so, um, so yeah, I've been here about three and a half years now. Her visa was up, and so it was, I decided it was my turn to, you know, leave the nest, try something a little different. Um, it's quite a ways from your hometown. Yeah, my parents probably aren't too jealous because they're not big flyers, but... Uh, it's it's nice. I kind of I think I was done. I'd lived in London my entire life, and it was just this was like the perfect opportunity to just go a completely clean slate and start from start from scratch. So so far, I feel like I've made the right choice. I like it here. <laughs> nice. Pretty much done. Any funny stories on adjusting to Portland? Uh, well, it's just it's the little things you get used to. Like apparently, I say words strangely, and just uh, you would think, considering we invented the language that I'd be easy to understand. but Or as my wife keeps reminding me, we invented it, you guys uh, perfected it. That's what she likes to say. <laughs> so yeah, it's just little things like having to randomly spell words without using them and adding Zs and removing Zs. And you know, it's just, yeah, it's, it's the tiny little things. Tipping for everything. We're not big tippers in England, oh. apparently. <laughs> but uh, it's funny, you, you, you grow up and you, walk, you get to see TV and so it's not like a gigantic culture shock. I've been here a bunch on vacation. Um, but yeah, it's just, a, it's just the tiny little things. Not being in London anymore is just, I, we went back for a wedding recently and it, I, it took me about 30 seconds of trying to get on the train to become the stressed out Londoner again. Like I kind of, I chilled out a little bit after moving here and it really doesn't take long to, to fall back into wanting to murder all the people that are standing on the wrong side of the elevator, escalator. <laughs> because they're holding up the traffic. If you try that rush hour in London, you will get beheaded. There are rules. <laughs> Apparently we're without rules here. The exactly. Wild West still. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> One of your songs it talks a little bit about that change, uh, the song Home. Yeah, it's the, that's the first thing I wrote uh, once I moved here. And it's just, it's a song about wanting to, uh, yeah, just kind of wanting to start from scratch and realizing that you, you, uh, you can't take everything that you had and bring it here and, and try and pretend that everything's the same. But you have to accept that you're in, a, you're in a new place and you're surrounded by new people and you have to just try and make that work now. You know, you can't, you, you've given up on that old life, and so now you have to start making yourself a new one. Beautiful. Well, let's hear it. All right. <clears throat> can't be that man no more The same one that for years before He never put a footstep out of place So I packed up my suitcase There were hooks and there were handshakes Now I'm starving over Half the world away Stay. So now I try to 
things up on the shelf these things belong to somewhere else I should water the flowers instead of watering the weeds I need to make new memories treasures that I long to keep and these strangers these strangers are just friends I've yet to meet and oh This place where it feels like home And I change for the sake of changing And I think I'll stay I think I'm done leaving Oh, no, I'm not leaving Something that. like that. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, although I have a frog. I need to deal with a frog in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the water's for. <laughs> yeah. mm. Excuse me. Um, yeah, and so I wrote that, and that, that was the first thing I wrote. And then relatively recently, within a uh, couple of months back, I wrote what I guess is the sequel to that song, um, which is... Uh, it, it's kind of a it's kind of a breakup song song I guess but a breakup song for London because I'd uh, we <laughs> we were going back out for yet another wedding we've been I've been here three and a half years and we've been back like four times already because I'm <laughs> of that age where all my friends have decided to get married now <laughs> and um and it and you know I've been here a while now I I guess I felt like I I'd miss the place more and I miss the people and I miss my friends but it um but yeah I don't miss the place. Uh, as much as I expected to, like I'm kind of, um, which is it's a strange realization because that's that was my home for, you know, approaching thirty years, um, and to kind of I that I just felt like that's where I was going to be, and and uh, so that you know kind of coming to that realization was was a little bit of an adjustment, but um, I got a song out of it, so there's that at least. But uh, this is yeah, this is a new one called uh, Easier to Leave. you like I should You see I found another I thought it would be harder Don't let me be misunderstood You 
No, I love you always. I just don't need you that way. Hey, hey. And I'll admit there was a time when I thought that you and me would be all that I. Now I have to draw the line You see I used to call you home Now you're just some place I come from I still remember all you mean to me But when you show what's hiding underneath You just make it easier to leave I guess it's still just early days Maybe I'll come back running and take back all that I'm saying But this heavy heart can't take the weight it's so hard to understand How could I love you when there's blood in your hands I still remember all you mean to me When you show what's hiding underneath You just make it easier Easier to you like I should You see I found another I thought it would be harder But don't let me be misunderstood You know I love you always I just don't need you that way Just the, it shows your range too, the, yeah. particularly yeah. with your vocals. The it's range uh, <laughs> well, I, I had a, a, a band practice a few weeks back and was playing it for, for the guys and my piano player, Jeff, was on the impression that the opening line was, I don't miss you like a shirt. <laughs> and, like uh, a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I miss shirts sometimes. If somebody steals a shirt and you want that shirt back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> of all the ways to misinterpret it, lyrics. Yeah. Well, let's geek out for a little bit on your guitar. Tell me about it. My guitar? Yes. Uh, this is my beautiful Taylor, and this I. There must be a statue of limitations, so I can probably tell this story by now. I got this. I was. I'm not going to name the name of the place, um, just in case I get somebody in trouble. There's a store down in Austin, Texas. I'd gone with some friends to, uh, to go to the Austin City Limits Festival, and and I was going to buy it here because the markup in England is is insane for for American guitars, and so. I went and I gave my credit card and I paid for it. And to this day, the charge has never appeared. Um, That's amazing. <laughs> so, like, I'm hoping I didn't get anybody fired. <laughs> but I, I was also the question, like, if I start making enough money that I can do this and not have to worry about cash, then I'm going to go give this to somebody that needs one and I'll go buy something else. Just because I'm sure at some point 
karma is going to come and bite me on the butt. It hasn't done it so far, but uh, maybe, maybe that was your good karma coming back. Yeah, maybe I did something awesome and forgot, and then this was pay payment. But uh, yeah, I do love this little thing. It's sound guys seem to love it as well. It's my, I, I just seem to turn up for sound checks and plug in and go. And they're like, cool, and we're done. All right, so <laughs> that's always lovely. <laughs> yeah, they appreciate it, and um, yeah, it's it, it that's the thing. Like I. There are things I love about having a band and things I and things that I don't. And one of the things I don't love about having a band is uh, sound checks that take like 50 minutes to to tune a drum and all that kind of stuff. But when I'm by myself, sound check is usually about 15 seconds. It's like it see I can hear it. That seems fine to me, I guess. So you're one of those guys that tunes by ear instead of using like a clip-on tuner. Oh, I have one of those things. But when you're by yourself, it kind of if, 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 if ever, as long as everything is flat together or sharp together, then it doesn't really seem to make much of a difference. You only, you only have to worry about that stuff when there's other people involved. So <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I like that you have a bright sound with it. A lot of guitars tend, particularly if you're doing a, a solo acoustic version, they go for a more warmer, deeper sounds. Yeah, I was, I, I was kind of nerding out about it. For like I spent like a good six months trying different things out, and it was going to be a toss-up between this and a Martin. And it's, it's funny that... These days, like I've been leaning more towards like Martins and Gibsons, but I can't afford to be buying any instruments right now. <laughs> um, so, but this this thing has been an absolute trooper. It's uh, yeah, it's it's just always been just this beautiful, bright sounding, lovely machine, and has never only gave me one issue. And uh, Taylor are so wonderful that they just kind of fixed it for free. There was something wrong with the power supply, and I took it into the store, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we'll just give you a new one. That's fine." So that's, it's nice. you know, it's a very, it's different when I had my, like my 90 pounds first guitar. I can't remember what make it was. It was like some horrible white Stratocaster ripoff <laughs> and, um, and they play horribly and it, and, and it's very difficult on your fingers. And, um, I, to make money when I'm not doing this, I make videos and for years back in England, I worked at a travel channel and, uh, back then, like I started editing like pre Final Cut and all that sort of stuff. So it was like tape machines and, and all that kind of stuff. I'm not even that old. I just happened to, I got very lucky. I got into it very young. And uh, and so there'd be lots of hours of, of pressing record and then having to sit there and wait for things to finish. So I went to a store down the street and bought like a 40 pounds acoustic guitar just to have in the room. And uh, it makes you a better guitar player because it's like playing a cheese grater because the strings oh, wow. are so high and horrible. But um, I don't miss that thing. I really, <laughs> really don't. <laughs> it makes me appreciate my little toy. Lovely. Okay. Well, since moving to Portland, it, how do you feel your songwriting has changed? Or um, has it? I think it's it, it's changed in that I kind of I, I feel like the stuff I was writing in England uh, was kind of I was more trying to be I was trying to be like an indie rock guy, and it just really isn't me. You know, it's one of those things like you could if you want to be in the Sex Pistols. But when you write a song, you sh you sound like Katy Perry, like it's just not meant to be. You know what I mean? Right. And so, you know, I I came of age when Britpop went gigantic, and that's why everybody learned to play guitar again. And so I was listening to Oasis and Blur and and Pulp and all these guys. But then at the same time, I was listening to Counting Crows and Ryan Adams and Tom Petty and and these like very American sounding things compared to what was popular. And so, the back of my mind, I was like, I had songs. I had a band back home and. I would write things and never show it to them because, like, well, this it's a great song, but it's not going to work in this situation. So there were there were things that just never they never came off the page, you know. Um, and now I feel like I can because I've started from scratch. It's like, well, if I'm going to do this for real, then I'm not going to care so much about what I think people are going to want to listen to. And and you know, as you get a little bit older, I think you stop worrying about trying to be cool. That's what I've learned now. That it's like I'm. I'm fine with not being particularly cool like I don't have the right haircut and I don't have the skinny jeans and <laughs> and all that kind of stuff so I'm, I'm fine just like I I have to enjoy it myself and if I enjoy it and hopefully other people do too and then that's that's all I can do you know because it's going to get old real quick if I if I'm doing something I hate <laughs> tell me a bit about that songwriting process um it's it's changed quite a bit it used to always be lyrics first like it would just be pages and pages of nonsense and, and stuff would come out. And then these days, it seems to be music first. I think it's just because I um, I tend to kind of write in, I'm not particularly prolific and I tend to write in little bursts. And uh, 
and I hate I hate repeating myself. Like I, there's only so many love songs you can do, and and, and things like that. And so, um, if I can't find what I feel like is an original way to say it, then I'm not going to bother. So there's a lot of things I could have written, um, which I didn't. I kind of I I started, and I was like, that, yeah, I either I've said that already, or somebody else has said it way better than me. So what's the point? You know. Um, let's see, let's see if I can segue into this. Hang on a second. <laughs> um. So this, I'm going to play a song. I do have upbeat ones, I promise. I'm just apparently playing a bunch of quiet ones. Uh, I was having a conversation with my father-in-law um, a little while after I first moved here, and and I'm assuming he was joking when he said it, but he was like, when are you going to write a song about my daughter? And I was having this conversation. I was trying to explain how difficult it is to write a love song. There's the I want to hold your hand and love you till the end of time sort of sappy songs, or there's the I want to get you into bed songs. And that's pretty much it. And so I ended up writing this, which is a song about why I didn't write her a song. Um, and, uh, and this is called Perfect Fit. This was too easy Words wouldn't have meaning It's so much harder The more admit You see I had this face Just under my rib cage And I think that you're the perfect I think that you're the perfect fit When I figure out The way these lines should go Then I'll write them down Just in case you didn't know That you are my best friend could tell you anything so now I'll tell you everything yeah I need a new spin a new phrase for these feelings Cause those words, they've been wasted So watered down So I'll try it simply Without all the poetry My life is better With you around my life is better with you around When I figure out The way these lines should go Then I'll write them down Just in case you didn't know That you are my best friend could tell you anything so now I'll tell you everything should go and write them down. Just
just in case you didn't know you are my best friend and i could tell you anything so now i'll tell you everything you see i had this face just under my rib cage and i think that you're the perfect fit yeah i think that you're the perfect fit i hit a wall oh well <laughs> i ruined a perfectly good moment there never mind <laughs> Oh, no, that was beautiful. Thank you. And I like that, uh, as you were mentioning, when you're listening to love songs or even just general singer-songwriter mm. music, it, the lyrics tend to suffer a bit, That, um, in my personal opinion anyway, that <laughs> they tend to repeat themselves quite often, and it, as pop music does, like the yeah. chorus, you hear the same five lines over and over and over. Yeah. And what? the fact that you have some originality, like the line about the space in your ribcage. That, that's the thing, that was the, when I got that line, then the rest of the song was a relatively easy task. It's funny, like, you have to sometimes just find the, like, decide, okay, the song's going to be about this now. Um, and, and some songs will take ages and ages, and some kind of spill out. There's, uh, I found, like, the ones I labor over are the ones that are never as good. There's something about, I, at least words-wise, because you like lyrics are supposed to be listened to they're not supposed to be read and so when you're writing it and you're reading it on a page and you're spending hours poring over it it just it just reads like bad teenage poetry after a while because it's like some some things sound great and then you read them and that's terrible mm -hmm. and uh and so the, yeah the songs that that come out as quickly as humanly possible you don't edit yourself and you don't spend too long kind of overthinking anything seem tend to come out the best so i'm going to play see so there's a reason I'm going to talk, I, have, I have a show coming up on, on August the 6th, uh, which is the first time I've played with a full band in, since the record came out, so like approaching two years. Okay. And, um, and one of the main reasons I'm going to love doing that show is because I, I have a, a guy, my friend Jeff Simpson, who um, he plays piano for me most of the time, but on this song I was so happy to meet him because he plays the trumpet. And um, so I had him play, you're going to have to, I'm gonna, I'll like nod at the camera for the people watching at home, and you're going to have to imagine like a really cool, sexy jazz trumpet solo in the middle of it um but this song has got like probably the most words on any of the songs on the record and it came out in like 45 minutes it was just like a word vomit i decided the other day i've invented a term for it it's the word vomit where it just um it just spilled out super easy and, and it was done and i was like oh i guess i have a song now um and uh yeah i'm gonna play this, this is a song called man on the side seems so familiar maybe not the place but the situation i found myself in where i can lose and i can't see the wind all your words bounce her off it baby i come thick skinned i bruise easily maybe that's just ego i don't know but i've been thinking about you too much it's all of the time and my back to the wall and your lips to my world maybe if i was stronger i could just say no it's clear that i want you so i'll see how it goes this seems to be the story most of the time is it my fault that you can't make up your mind to say hello to the man on the side i'll be your best kept secret if there's a chance that someday you'll be mine oh my I, I, Man, no, 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 oh, 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 oh. Some must think that I'm a glutton for pain, but it's not like I'm a fucking boss and want to rip my heart out again. Again, no, it's not my fault. All these girls should come with a sign or a warning label. They don't seem able to tell the truth. We start up something till they finally do. But then it was much too late and I got, got myself in trouble again. I swear I learned this lesson. I know how it ends. I couldn't you just say, let's just be friends and say hello to the man on the side. I'll be your best kept secret if there's a chance that something you'll be mine. Oh my, I, 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 oh, oh, oh my, no, 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 no. Sexy trumpet time. So 
coming out on August 6th and you get to hear Sexy Sexy Trumpet. And he's going to love the fact that I keep referring to him as sexy. <laughs> so all these girls are right, this open leather. I know I still miss you, but my aim is getting better. And you treat me like a rag doll, I can't be that guy. Treat me like that and I'll kiss you goodbye. No, 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 no. Say goodbye to the man on the side. You best kept secret, and one day soon you'll be wishing you were mine. Oh, mine. Oh, oh mine. Oh, mine. No, 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 oh, mine. definitely more upbeat <laughs> yeah i don't want to put all your listeners to sleep so <laughs> right <laughs> i can't decide if that's more jazz or almost like a blues slash big band 40 style that was yeah did you ever see boxing alone yes but that's what i had in my head when i was doing that it's like this is gonna be a, if this would be the boxing alone soundtrack so i guess yeah it's like a ben folds me to big band kind of vibe i was going for i guess but <laughs> <laughs> it, you just need a couple of backup vocals doing the doo-wop. I, yeah, I've got some people, like there's a, a wonderful lady by the name of Anna Tibble, um, who put a record out a little while back, and she's great. And uh, she played fiddle on the record, and she uh, she did the woes in the chorus, because she had like the suitably jazzy sounding woe voice to do it. So uh, that's the only, <laughs> she, she, she got, she's a great singer, and the only thing I had to sing on the entire record was two words. <laughs> I feel really bad, but uh, you should all get her record. She's awesome. And speaking of getting records, where can people find your record? Um, anywhere online where they sell music. Uh, so it's on, if, if people are streaming people, it's on Spotify and, and radio and all those things. And it's on iTunes. Or uh, or you could just come get it from me, TomLines.com, Tom with an H, Lines with a Y. And uh, um, yeah, I you can buy the, the CD or you can just go to the store and pay whatever you like and, and just come and get it. Um, I imagine okay. you'll have them for sale at the White Eagle. Yes, yes, the White Eagle, August the sixth. It's gonna be it's gonna be a really good show. We have a we have a guy called Justin Farron who's coming up from California and he's fantastic. He uh, I saw him do he did a residency at Al's Den a while back where they they, they do a thing there where they have people coming for a week and um, my my buddy Peter was playing one of the shows until I went to see him and he's fantastic. He uh, he had this great song about I I I guess he, he caught his dog eating a neighborhood rabbit or something, and so he wrote a song for his dog called uh, I Like to Kill Things Too, which <laughs> I thought was fantastic. But he's a really great songwriter, and then I'll have full bands, which I haven't done in forever. I, I play with a trio quite a lot with a, a piano player and a bass player, but uh, this is the first time with drums and electric guitars and stuff in a while. And, um, and Jonah Luke, who's going to be closing out the show, who's just, uh, he's just so much fun. He just like, he, he writes, uh, he calls it like an unabashedly just like happy, just pop music, like you want to get up and jump. Like I can't dance for sausage, but I'll get up and jump around during his set because he's just delightful. So I was going. There are times when you get put on bills with people and you're not particularly like I am genuinely excited to be playing this show because it's just like full of people I adore. So end of plug. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and it makes it more fun when their music you enjoy. You're not going to play your set and run out the door. Well, this is it. I also have the yeah. I'm my half of my band is playing with with Jonah as well. So. Um, mm. I kind of have a reason to stick around because yeah, it's going to be a stage for the very lovely people. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot of fun. Right. And White Eagle, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that's the one just uh, North Portland off Interstate? Yeah, just off Interstate uh, near the near the Gotham building. I was going to say the Gotham Tavern, but apparently that doesn't exist anymore. But there's a building called the Gotham building and it's, yeah. it's a couple blocks off of there. But uh, yeah, I've never actually played that room before. I've been there huh. a ton of times. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this, as you can tell. <laughs> I'm all bubbly. <laughs> That's the idea. Uh, switching gears a little bit, uh, tell me about how you got into music. Um, oh well, I always f I always feel like you kind of reach a certain age of a like when you're kind of becoming a teenager, and I don't know if it's the same here, but at least in England, it seemed it seemed to be like people got really into sport, like football, as in the foot the football you play with your feet, like mm -hmm. the you guys call soccer. Yeah, so you either soccer. got really into like football or you got really into music. That seemed to be mm -hmm. the way it was, and. 
excuse me, I'm doing Mark Rubio there. Uh, the I, I had a, my friend Daniel was was he was slightly older and way cooler than me in terms of his music taste. Like I was listening to whatever was on the like you'd sit and listen to the top forty on a Sunday and you'd tape the radio and, and that kind of thing. And um, there was this wonderful DJ uh, uh, called John Peel back in England who had, who had a show on Radio One, and he just he discovered a ton of bands and would, and would play things you wouldn't you wouldn't normally hear. And my friend Daniel made me this mixtape of like a bunch of stuff from from John Peel's radio show and a few other things. And then and then Britpop happened, um, and it, it kind of swept up the nation a little bit, I suppose. And you you kind of had all of these guitar bands suddenly being on TV again and on the radio again, and and guitar music became cool again. And, uh, my next door neighbour had bought a guitar, and uh, and so my, and my older brother bought one as well, and I kept stealing it. And between the three of us, we we were learning. We'd learn like Nirvana songs and Oasis songs. Like that was how we st we started. In. And I couldn't. It took me like a year to play a bar chord because my fingers weren't strong enough. Um, but there's there there are awful cassette tapes floating around somewhere, of like me doing covers of Oasis songs. But my voice had broken and. Uh, I used to I used to sing in a choir in school and I could I, I was a treble I used to sing really high and my voice broke and I sang bass, and so I could sing stupidly high and really really low and had no mid range whatsoever. So there's all these awful cassette tapes of me like singing songs an octave lower because that's the only way I could sing it, um, and I'm sure at some point they'll surface somewhere. Do you still have the John Peel record somewhere? Uh no, that was I don't know whether there's something about tapes when you're playing too much and they wear out so oh, that true. that that disappeared. I, probably got most of the songs that were on it in various forms on, mm -hmm. on my iPod. But, um, so that happened, and then when I turned 16, uh, it was time to try and find a part-time job, and I, my first day of looking, I wandered into this record store, and I, I got a job. There. It, was, it was this chain store called, uh, called Art Price that they, they used to be owned by Virgin, so you can imagine, mm -hmm. you know, kind of big top 40 place. But uh, you know, sometimes the manager would go home, and then you'd just start playing whatever you wanted, and that was, that was like the most fun to just, uh, you had to be really polite if people came in and they're like asking an opinion of a record and you, if you didn't like it, you, you couldn't say as much. So you would have to try and find a way of not telling that it was terrible. So the best part of the day was the manager would go home and then you would just put something on and then somebody would hear it on the speakers and they'd come and they'd buy it and it was something they'd never heard before and I was like, That's, that was an amazing feeling. Um, I think that's one of the fun parts of going into a record store even today. Yeah is getting the opinion of the person in the record store and if they're nice enough they'll look at it and go you don't want that and they put it back and they're like come here let yeah. me help you well there is <laughs> tough because you do get some people who are just like failed rock stars it's the same like if you go if you go guitar shopping it's the same thing it's like let me just make sure this isn't in tune for you and they like whip out some ridiculous guitar solo to prove that they're amazing um and you know like sometimes like it it wasn't it wasn't like high fidelity ridiculous where you'd come in and just like start screaming at, at people because they're of their awful taste but you did have to kind of walk the line of trying to not offend anyone <laughs> and try just trying to like gently steer in the correct direction you know um i remember like, be it, like we we uh there were certain records like i knew i could sell like if i put on grace by jeff buckley i would sell three copies like they were just done deals because mm -hmm. it didn't get played on the radio and, and people didn't know what it was and you just hear like the opening songs of last goodbye or the, the, op the opening words and and yeah I, I could easily sell two or three of those in in, in 30 minutes and that was always a nice feeling you know, I feel like I'm doing my part. <laughs> Educating. <laughs> exactly. <Right. laughs> Do you remember what the first song you learned how to play was? Oh, God. Uh, it was, what was it? It would have been Supersonic by Oasis, but I couldn't figure out the chords of the chorus. So that, on that awful cassette tape, there's a, there, there's me playing, I could play the chords to the verse and then I sing the verse really low and then we got to the chorus and I just have to sing it with no music underneath. That, that took me a couple months to figure that out, but uh, I've been quite lucky, like as I got a little bit older, I could just listen to things and pick them up pretty quickly, um, which is which is coming handy. But When you listen to music now, do you kind of pick it up out to see if you could play it yourself? Depending on what it is. I see, like there are, it, my wife doesn't understand how, how you do it, but sometimes like if you can figure out what one chord is, then if you've been doing it long enough, you can figure out what key that's in, and then you can figure out like there's just something about certain strings sound a certain way and you can like that's a G with a capital on the second fret or something. Um, sometimes it's really, really difficult, but there are certain songs where it just, you know, a lot of songs have only got four chords in, like it's not rocket science, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Most songs now, it's like, I think there's a YouTube video of guys who play all the songs that have just four chords and yeah. it's just like a 
progression of like 50 different songs there's, in a row. There's a, a <laughs> band back in England uh, called Status Quo. I don't know if they ever made it over here. Um, and they were kind of famous for just pretty much having three chords in every song. It was just like... Like that was every single song. And the guitarist got like repetitive strain injury. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would happen. Uh, but what do you listen to today? Uh, what do I listen to today? Um, new things or old things? Because it like tends to be... lately. Lately? Uh, I made a new friend a few weeks back. Uh, a, a guy by the name of John Black who... He records under the name Ford Atlantic, and um, he had a song that they, they used, I guess it was like the finale of How I Met Your Mother or something, and so lots of people have listened to it, but his his record is fantastic. Uh, well, that's what I listened to recently. Yeah, um, even if it's an old record, just something you happen to have listened to I, last I actually did, we, my, I, I had some records back in England that I, I brought back with me, and so I brought back, a, I, Jeff Buckley, I just brought back and threw on the record player. So I sold, like, I got rid of all my CDs when I moved here. I put everything on my hard drive and just, like, took them all to a, a charity store. And so I've been kind of slowly rebuilding my collection again on vinyl, which is quite bad because I'm, like, going to secondhand stores and buying so much vinyl that I can't remember if I bought this already, <laughs> which is probably a bad sign. Well, um, vinyl eventually wears out, too, though. So you got to yeah, replace it. I know. But it just looks so much cooler than the screen on your iPod. It's just, there's something about having something tangible and, mm -hmm. and you know, and having the artwork like it like it's a piece of art because it's that it's the, the size of it you know yeah. are, um, are you picky about the weight of it too like the 180 gram vinyl versus the older if there's an option mm -hmm. i mean most of the time you kind of get what you get but uh and then i mean like i bought a couple of, of records that i've never played because they're worth money which is kind of stupid like i i, I generally don't do that because i feel like it, it's the same with instruments like i don't understand people who buy a musical instrument and hang it on the wall like it's mm -hmm. It's meant to be played, but like I got uh, the first Counting Crows record on vinyl because you can't find it anywhere. Like I found it on eBay one day, and um, so that's never come out of its little plastic wrapping thing because I feel like that might, you know, if I'm late on a mortgage payment or something, it might come back <laughs> empty. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, but there, there's certain like the Jeff Buckley record you can always go back to, and and it doesn't it doesn't seem to have aged. There are certain records I can like uh, Forever and Ever Amen by Ben Folds Five. Like if you're going like Desert Island Discs, that's that's up there. Um, what else are we going for? The new one from Noah Gunson is pretty good. Um, I got to see him down in uh, down in Austin a couple of years back. I got a job working at South by Southwest, um, which sounded great because they were like give me a pass to go to the festival and everything. And then uh, mm -hmm. I, I I edit videos and I ended up just sitting in a dark room editing videos for pretty much the entire festival. But I did get to go out. One, one day and see him play. Um, he can put on a good show. He's got a scary good voice. Um, Have you been doing any shows lately? I've not been going to too many. Like I've, I've started kind of getting over going to like big rooms. Mm -hmm. There's just something about once you, you know, once you go see a, sh a show at the Doug Fair or something and then, you know, like I'm like I'd love Tom Petty's come to town. I'd love to see Tom Petty, but I'm not going to the Motor Center. Like I have scruples. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tom Petty and Steve Winwood, and I'm sure it's going to be an amazing show. But I just can't bring myself to sit in a room with thirty thousand people or however many that thing holds. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, I use the term show loosely. Like, have you been to shows at Doug Fir or Outstander oh, yeah. or anything I mean, like that? I just love going to see my friends. Um, if you if you get the chance to go see Anna Tivill and uh, Jeffrey Martin, they they tend to play play with each other quite a bit and. They're fantastic. I think Jeff, Jeffrey's about to put a new record out, and he's really, really good. Um, a girl by the name of Jenna Ellison, who's another friend of mine, and uh, I made a music video for her a little while back for this song called Poppies, because I, I just remember hearing it, and, and there, you know, you hear a song for your first time, and it's like, oh, God, I hate you for writing a song this beautiful. And um, <laughs> she was kind enough to let me make a video for that, so. Um, Musicians, jealousy. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things, it's like, I wish you weren't so nice so I could hate you a little easier. You know? <laughs> it's like, make this easier to make me think you suck. Um, but that's a nice thing I found here, actually. It's a big difference compared to London. Like, London seems way more kind of competitive and, and cutthroat. And you meet people here, and and uh, it's like, oh, come, yeah, let, we should play a show together, and, and, and that kind of stuff. And it's just, it seems to be a way more kind of inviting, uh, inviting town. It, you know, it's yeah. interesting. It's... it's Portland specific I found out that oh, really? going to other places like LA or New York they're very competitive 
whereas New York apparently, Day, yeah. yeah, Portland apparently is unique in its collaborative efforts. I mean, it is kind of ridiculous because you'll go to a show and you'll know half the people. Like everybody plays in fifty bands and all that kind oh, of yeah. stuff. And it becomes its, its own little community. Everybody knows everybody. Yeah, which I suppose is good and bad. Like you don't want to annoy anybody because <laughs> people <laughs> talk. I guess. Um, but Some it, incestuous relationships yeah. after a while. <laughs> I, I think. I mean, I think it is good sometimes to to get out of the comfort zone a little bit and go work with people you don't know because I, I, it probably can be a little too easy to just. Mm. Um, I mean, that was a nice thing. Like. When I made the record here, like I didn't, I, the I met I met a guy called uh, Peter Rodica who, he's the guy who produced it and he plays guitar and mandolin on it and uh, and I I was just putting all my faith in him because I didn't really know anyone in this town and so he he would invite all these people to come to come in and play and uh, and like everyone like just completely blew me away and it was just it, but it was completely refreshing to I didn't know any of these people and I literally like gave them like a CD of, of some like acoustic songs and they just they learned the songs and they came in and they played and it was like yeah just keep doing that that's fine <laughs> like that was the coolest feeling like I'm not a fan of recording and I tend to Peter gets annoyed at me because I'll set like arbitrary deadlines where it's like it has to be done by now yeah. for no other reason than I want it just over with and it's uh, I, like I love sitting in the room and hearing what all these other people are doing but I hate like sitting in the room and listening to me doing 50 takes of the same line to try and get it right you know mm -hmm. that's just painful um, How do you really know when a song's done then? Well, this is the thing. It was nice meeting him and then and having someone that you trusted where I knew he wouldn't let me get away with doing something awful or, or just kind of getting something okay. But at the same time, you know, I my my playing and my singing will never be as good as my ears. And I'll only, like, it doesn't matter how good a take would be, I'll only hear, like, the one half the thing that I think should have been better. And so it was not like, he, he's like, you've you got it, it's fine. And, and, and having someone that you trusted enough to be like, stop being an idiot. Um, you know, it takes a little bit of faith, but like once you, if you meet somebody you can do that with, like that's a, that's a for somebody like me, it's an absolute blessing because otherwise I'd never leave the room, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, well, tell me, uh, switching gears again, uh, what's some of the songs you have planned for the White Eagle show? Uh, there's a few, uh, there's a song I'm going to play in a minute. Um, there, there are some songs that I just love playing because they, you know, because it's nice having drums on stage with you and things like that. But, uh, but I do believe if you have the record flying around, I might actually have you play something from the record because there's a song that I never get to play because uh, to really do it justice, you need a nice big string section. So there's a song called "When You Wake" that is one of the older songs, and um, and it has like my favorite 30 second segment of the entire album, where there's this bit towards the end where the strings all finally kick in and. Um, I still like, I remember sitting in the room because we and we recorded it all live, that like all the string section and just sitting on a couch in the studio with some headphones on and, and hearing it play back and was trying to not like jump up and down and ruin the take because it sounded so cool. Um, but yeah, I never get to play this song because when you play it by yourself, it it needs it needs everything to to really pull it off. But uh, yeah, if you want to sure, skip that no. spin, uh, it's gonna take up until five minutes before we finish up. Is there anything you want to say to introduce it or be sure you mention before I throw this on? Uh, well, yeah, you should all just come to the show. I think that's the biggest thing. And, and not just like, as I said, I, I'm looking forward to it for my own sake, but I, uh, you guys, it's gonna be a hell of a night. I'll say that much. Like it's, I'm genuinely, genuinely excited to be playing with all these people. So um, get if yourselves out. <laughs> If anyone's so unfortunate as to not be able to make it, do you have other shows coming up afterwards? Yeah, there's a few. I, uh, I'll be up in, I, I've got a show in Camus. Uh, I'll be heading down to San Francisco in a little while. Uh, I'll be in Corvallis playing a, a beer festival down there. If they head to tomlines.com, everything's listed and things are getting added every week recently. So. Is that the bl best place to check it out or would the Facebook or Twitter be better? Uh, I'm more of a Twitter person than a Facebook person, I've discovered. There's there's too many cat pictures on Facebook, <laughs> um, but yeah, the web the website's probably the easiest place because I I like to kind of collate everything in one place, and then I'm sure at some point Twitter will not be cool anymore, and Facebook won't be cool, and I'll lose I won't be able to talk to anyone anymore. So it's easier to keep pushing everyone to one place because MySpace was cool back in the day. Remember that? It was like. <laughs> All right, so that is uh, TomLyons.com yes, for anyone checking out. And so now I'm going to play the song When You Wake.
just yet We'll be safe till the morning When we face all our promises And all our questions When will this be the end? Do we know? What's coming? We don't need all the answers yet. Here's the one thing that we know: I'll be here when you wake up, and I'll be here. I'll be here when you. From here on the outside, looking in, you seem free of the burdens you keep. And for once, it's this moment you're living in. Save you trust. Is such a great ending. Everything sounds better with cello. That's oh, just right. a rule I decided. <laughs> I should have cello on everything. If there's any cello players out there that want to come play in my band, that'd be great. Yeah, there, there's lots in Portland Cello Project if any of you guys are listening. <laughs> yeah, please do. That would be amazing. Yeah, if anyone does want to collaborate with you, how do they reach you? Uh, again, through the, through the website. Yeah, I'm on Facebook and Twitter and all those places. But yeah, you can just drop an email info at tomlines.com. I, I, you know, it's on my phone. I check that every time something comes through. It's always me. There's never machines answering emails. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm always looking for for new things to do and new people to meet and new people to listen to things. And you know, 
thank you for having me in. It's always nice to put music in the ears of people who don't know who I am. That's always the hard part. So, okay. thanks for being here. I appreciate. Yeah, yeah I appreciate the uh, the opportunity. It's like that lyric in the song poem. It's the strangers or friends you haven't met yet. This is it. You there know. You go. Um, yeah, I have to get better at that stuff. So I think we have time for one more, and okay. then we'll have to kick you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll just I'll keep going until people tell me to shut up. That's usually how I roll. Uh, I'm gonna do one. This is uh, I was like making a, like a conscientious, a conscientious, if I can get the word out, uh, effort to to write less songs about girls because like I'm married now. There's only so many of those I'm, I've got left in me. Like I've got I can't keep meeting new new girlfriends or anything. That's done. Yeah, you know, they'll hopefully. all have to be about her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's gonna get old. <laughs> um, and so I was like, oh, I know, I'll write a song about Congress. People don't do that very often. That sounds like a great idea. And, uh, and then I realized that that's in, like, the United States Congress doesn't really lend itself to a chorus. So, um, so I decided to start referring to them as Mary because that had two syllables in it and it worked. And, and so um, for the next three and a half minutes or so, we'll refer to them as Mary. Uh, <laughs> but this is, this is one that's always fun to play with a band because making this nice and loud. Just uh, come to the show, you'll understand what I mean. <laughs> Hello, we meet again. Seems you've got people talking Not the reasons that you wanted tonight Instead of standing tall You'd rather stand defiant You do it wrong instead of doing some right For all the things I love I won't lie There's things that you do They make me so sad I want to love you, Mary, but you made me so mad. How did this get so hard? The way you learn your lesson. I tried to blame it on the folly of you. But now you're at it again. The same old expectations. You got some growing up to do for all the things I love I won't lie the things that you do they make me so sad I want to love you Mary but you make me so mad I want to love you Mary but you make me so damn mad Tired of the arguments who want a conversation I want some brand new bright ideas I want the best intention To hear the people speak or not just those that scream the loudest I mean the others are just trying to live more for taking stands So stay with those who need it Stop asking more With those with nothing to give For all the things I love I won't lie The things that you do They make me so sad I want to love you very But you make me so I want to love you, Mary, but you made me so damn mad. Woo! Okay, 
the flower <laughs> 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 All right, before you take off, can I get a quick station drop from you? Just, this is uh, Tom Lyons, and you're listening to KPSU. Okay, yeah. This is Tom Lyons, and you're listening to KPSU. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you for being here. Oh, really God, thank you for having me. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Although I did just realize that there's a camera pointing at me while I'm listening to my own song for four minutes, and so that's probably a little... I can't wait to see the live feed of that. That's going to be hilarious. <laughs> oh, I'm sure everyone will tell you all about it. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, anything you want to mention before you take off? Um, just, yeah, keep going to see, even if it's not me, please p keep going to go see people play music because that's the only way we get to do what we do is if people keep paying attention. So, uh. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And I get to remind everyone that you're listening to KPSU, Portland's College Radio, which is available at www.kpsu.org, where all of our shows are available for podcasting and download. You can, of course, check us out on all the lovely apps that we have. There's the TuneIn app for iPhones, and there is the Android app, which is the official KPSU app in the Android store. Or if you have a Windows phone, you can also use the TuneIn app or just go to the pop-out player on kpsu.org. Thank you guys for listening.